So you're brand new to the tennis game and you just bought your racket and you jump on the court and you realize you don't know how to hold the thing. Now tennis has changed a lot over the years and there are a bunch of different ways to hold the racket which are going to give you different results in terms of the shots you're hitting and also going to give you different ease of access to different things you want to do on the court. Welcome to today's Tennis 101 where we go over grips. Now like I said, there are a bunch of different ways to hold the racket, but it's actually broken up in a very systematic way. Every tennis racket that you ever buy will have eight sides. And when we look at it at this angle here, we're gonna count them from one all the way around to eight, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed, you'll just move counterclockwise or clockwise. Now, when we look at our forehand, we're gonna start by counting from number two. So if we had this be number one at the very top of the edge, then we would go one, two, three, all the way around to number eight. Everything I say today is gonna to be based off of this little spot on your hand, which is called the index knuckle or the base knuckle. Placing your base knuckle or index knuckle on different flat parts of the racket are gonna lock you into different grips, which will give you different types of easy or challenging stroke production. When you are brand new to the game, most people learn in what is called an Eastern forehand, which is gonna be placing the knuckle that we talked about onto the flat part, which is number three. So counting from the top, one, two, three, that would put us on the immediate right side or immediate left side of the racket, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. Now, I always say as a coach that it's easiest to teach an Eastern forehand and then let people make the adjustments as they get better to do things that are more conducive to the way they wanna play. But the reason why I teach people in an Eastern forehand initially, if they're brand new, is because your palm lines up with the racket face. So it's very easy to open up your strings or close your strings and have everything match what's happening with your hand. Now, when you hit your forehands, an Eastern forehand is going to be the easiest way to hit a pretty linear shot, meaning that your racket is gonna travel pretty straight through and the ball is gonna follow that path and go into the court. You can lift up the ball and create more spin and shape and ha still have that ease of access, but it will have a little bit of stress on your wrist when you're learning, but it is still very doable. Taking it one step further, we would go from number three to number four. That's gonna put us into a semi-Western grip. That is one of the most common grips that you see competitive tennis players use once they've got some skill. That gives you ease of extension to make the ball go straight, but also ease of creating shape. The challenge here is timing because your motions tend to get a little bit bigger and a little bit more loopy once we get into semi-western grips or further. So learning in a semi-western grip is going to be pretty practical once you've got the basics of how to manipulate the racket. Most people immediately make that change over to a semi-western grip. Now step four or three, whatever number we're on, going all the way down from number one, two, three, four to number five, this is what we call a Western grip. Now the Western grip gives you a lot of access to spin, but not as much on the power side for your normal shot because the natural angle of the arm is gonna end up kind of dropping a bit. And I really don't recommend learning in a Western grip because most people who are learning will develop bad technical things early on, and then they'll be fighting injuries or ailments just from the joints being in a compromised position. But there are plenty of professional players that play in a full Western grip, so it is something that can be applied even to a very, very high level. I just think it's difficult to learn. Now, the grip that I didn't talk about was what you do if you were to go one step before an Eastern, which was number three, going to number two, a continental grip is when your base knuckle is placed on number two. Now, the thing about a continental grip that's really cool is it gives you ease of access to both sides of the racket, and you also are gonna be using this when you're hitting volleys as well as serves. I haven't covered any strokes in Tennis 101, but just trust me, you're gonna be using it for volleys and serves more often. Now, back in the day in wooden and metal racket times, people actually played forehands and backhands with continental grips as well. The problem with a continental grip as it pertains to a forehand is that it's actually gonna force you to kind of bring your contact point back a little bit because putting your racket out here and keeping it straight is kind of stressful on the inside of the elbow and the wrist. So most continental grip players actually hit the ball a little bit later and they're gonna be about right here. Now it does still work. As I said, there are still some very old school players that play in the continental grip and it is still functional, but that ease of spin is gonna be very challenging, but that ease of flatness and extension through the ball going to be very easy to use. Now switching over to the backhand side, I'm going to talk about the one-handers first and the two-handers. When you go to a 
one-handed backhand, going one step past Continental in the opposite direction, we would go from number two to putting our knuckle on number one. That's gonna be our Eastern backhand. So if, if you notice a trend here, we've got Continental Eastern for forehand, Continental Eastern for backhand. The Continental grip is gonna be the neutral grip and immediately gives us access to go one way or the other for basic checkpoints. So going to our Eastern backhand, this is actually ironically one of the most common for the one-handed backhand now. The Eastern forehand, not so much, but the Eastern backhand very often for one-handers. Now, similarly, we're gonna have very ease of access of hitting through the ball, and we're gonna have a little bit more tension when we try to create more shape to it, but again, very accessible. The next one is gonna be a semi-Western one-hander, which is gonna be one step further. Not as common, but still very prevalent, again, again, in some players to learn. Now, this is something I actually see with a lot of recreational players that just decided they were gonna have one-handed backhands, and they'll just be in this grip, kind of just like whipping their hand around. It is functional. I've seen players do it full time. And there is even a, going one step further, Western one hand. Now this is very, very rare, but it does exist. There are people who literally hit backhands like this. I will never teach somebody to do it. I don't recommend starting it or learning it, but it does exist. You will get a lot of spin on it very easily, but again, the extension and the power kind of goes down. Switching over to our last one, which is going to be for the two handers. We're going to be measuring off of both hands now, so, this, so pay attention. Starting with Continental Grip on the right hand, for me who is a right-hander, my Continental Grip means I'm on number two. I can go double Continental and go number two and number eight, and this is going to be a two-handed backhand grip, but for my left hand, I can also go from number eight to number seven, and it's still going to be a feasible two-hander, but we, again, we've got basically double Continental, and then we've got Continental and Eastern, well, we've got continental and semi. Now, there are some people that go continental and western. That's something that exists. Again, not something I would teach in the beginning, but I have seen people that do it full time. So that is all of the essential grips that you're going to need to know. Now, as I said, when we are in continental and eastern, those are going to be easier for more flat strokes. And when we're in the semis and the westerns, we're gonna be airing more towards the side of being able to spin the ball and create more shape. And that goes likewise for the backhand side, continental and continental, very easy to go flat, continental and eastern. We start to have a little more ease of coming up and then continental and semi, even easier to get up. That's gonna wrap up today's video on grips. I try to keep it very simple and concise. If anybody would benefit from this as they're learning how to hold the rackets in certain ways, you might wanna tell them what the benefits of one versus the other are, send this off to them. But I'll see everybody in our next Tennis 101 